2020 Democrats are back on the campaign trail this weekend after the first round of highly anticipated and sometimes fiery presidential debates. And for 2020 hopeful Julian Castro, that means drawing attention to the crisis at the border after his breakout moment at the debate when he sparred with Beto O'Rourke on immigration. Joining me now from San Antonio is Democratic presidential candidate and former housing secretary Julian Castro. Sir, thanks for being with us. Great to be with you. So before we do get to immigration, I want to ask you about this historic meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un at the DMZ. Is this, in your view, a positive step? Well, look, I'm always for uh, speaking to our adversaries, opening up uh, diplomatic conversations. Uh, the problem is that this president seems bent on approaching this very erratically, very haphazardly. As you know, Brianna, he did this at the last minute. And the problem with that is that to be effective, um, this usually goes the other way around. There's a lot of staff work that goes into preparing a meeting like this so that concrete uh, terms are on the table and you can get something out of the meeting. They had the first summit, the Singapore summit, I guess just over a year ago. And North Korea has not abided by what it promised at that summit, which was to produce an inventory of their weapons stockpile so that there could be a baseline for further talks. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why this president is so bent on elevating the profile of a dictator like Kim Jong-un when Kim Jong-un has not lived up to his promise from the first summit. Uh, it's been a failure so far. We can always, and I will be hopeful, that there's some progress that comes out of this. Um, is restarting but, uh, talks, again, the president said that this is reopening discussion. Is, is that not progress, in your view? Well, usually that reopening of discussion is done by lower level staff. And the reason for that is that you want to work up toward uh, an agreement that the president can get, something that's concretely on the table. What it seems like is that for the president, this is what he's about. It's all show. It's all symbolism. It's not substance. And uh, right after the Singapore summit a year ago, he told the American people, and folks will remember this, that North Korea was no longer a threat. But it turns out that then they did uh, weapons testing after that. So there is a problem here. He keeps telling us one thing, but the reality is another. And haphazardly meeting with Kim Jong-un, raising his profile, strengthening him across the world with nothing for the United States. That is a problem. Now, the president says, I want to talk to you about immigration right now. The president is saying that he plans to start some raids next week on some migrant families who have been court ordered to leave the country. There's Los Angeles and Chicago who have said that they're going to direct their police departments to not assist ICE in rounding up immigrants. Would you encourage police departments to follow suit in other cities? Uh Yes, I would, because I believe that local law enforcement should do its job and federal law enforcement has its own job to do. Uh, so I'm glad to see that uh, Los Angeles and Chicago are doing that. Uh, the other thing is, what's very clear is that this president likes to terrorize these immigrant families. Uh, he likes to scare them. He likes to use this issue as a uh, political weapon to draw up fear and paranoia in his base, and he thinks that this is going to help him get reelected with a narrow electoral college victory in 2020, the way he got in 2016. And I draw a very, very straight line between these types of actions by the president, or at least the talk, the threat, and the proposal to have a citizenship question on the U.S. Census. He wants to scare these immigrant families. He wants self-deportation. And he wants to chill the others from participating in American life. The fact is that uh, our immigrant community, whether documented or undocumented, add a lot to this country. They help us move forward. They don't deserve to be terrorized like this. And, um, you know, last time uh, he all of a sudden said that he's going to postpone these raids. Uh, he talks so much, you don't know what to believe. And, uh, but I'm glad that Los Angeles and Chicago and other police departments are pushing back. There have been some just despicable online uh, racist attacks on your fellow candidate, uh, Senator Kamala Harris, including one that the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., retweeted. What is your reaction? 
uh, that it's disgusting, that it has no place in our politics. Uh, and this is the game that these folks play. They put something out there. You notice what he did. He tweeted it out, and then he deleted it like a coward so he can say, oh, that was just a mistake. But he knows what he's doing. He's giving voice to these racist um, uh, you know, utterances about Senator Harris. Uh, you know, we need to dispel them immediately and condemn them and then not give them any more life because they're disgusting. Um, I want to ask you about another one of your candidate, uh, fellow candidates, Beto O'Rourke. You criticized him for not supporting your push to decriminalize crossing the border. Afterward, according to the Texas Tribune, you, you said at a campaign event that while you were previously written off as the, quote, other Texan, you are now, quote, the Texan in this race. Are you saying that the former congressman's campaign is effectively over? No, of course. Uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for Congressman O'Rourke. I was glad to support him when he ran against Senator Cruz. Uh, you know, he and I get along well. The disagreement that we had the other night was about policy. It wasn't personality. And, um, you know, I'm glad that 13 other candidates now, you may have seen on the second night of the debate, they asked this question, who believes that we should repeal that law that I was talking about, Section 1325, the Immigration Nationality Act, and either eight or nine of the 10 people on that stage that night raised their hand. So 13 other candidates have said, if we want to end family separation, the way to do that is to repeal that section of the Immigration Nationality Act. And uh, I've proposed that we do that. Congressman O'Rourke has refused to agree to that. Uh, so many people, a lot of immigration lawyers have said we have to do that if we're going to be if we're going to effectively end family separation. So this is about the people that are impacted by this. I was just at, at uh, the Clint detention facility yesterday where there have been reports of terrible living conditions, of children being mistreated, uh, of uh, you know all sorts of things that we cannot justify as Americans or human beings. So this is important to me. It's not about a personal difference. It's about the policy.